Welcome to the Hudson Valley Knits podcast. This is episode, I think, 87. Let me check my notes. Uh, I am Amy, your host. I am coming to you from Oscawana State Park, I've, aka McAndrews Estate. I've podcast here many times before. And even in this one spot, I tried to podcast by the river, but it was way too windy. You wouldn't have heard a word I said. My hair was like all over the place. Um, so I picked this little spot by the swamp and um, I apologize for any trains that might go by, but that's the way it is. The Hudson line goes up the Hudson, so what are you gonna do? Anyway, I have a lot of cool stuff to show you, um, but I'll start right up front for those of you who noticed the title this episode and have been watching me for a while you know that I have a bird named Birdie who sometimes will fly in and join me during a podcast and um, or would sing in the background and Birdie passed away last weekend it's one of the reasons I, I didn't podcast last week and like I should have uh, it was a very depressing weekend and that Birdie passing away was just one of the things that made it a bad weekend, even though I did have a nice Mother's Day with my son, my mom. I came home from my mom's to find my bird had died. So it's very sad, but Birdie lived a lot longer than most birds of his species do. So we're happy we had Birdie around as long as we did, a good 20 plus years. So, um, I'll put a little tribute to Birdie at the end. Sorry if it's corny for you. Of course, you don't have to watch it. So, let's get, I will, uh, I do the announcements and the chatter at the end. So, uh, I'm going to just jump right into my whips. I only have a two whips, or three whips, two whips to show you that I've been working on. Um, one is my just plain vanilla socks, which um, have an afterthought heel. I am on the second sock. Here's the first one. I call them my um, Luck of the Irish socks because I started them in March for St. Patty's Day because they're rainbows and green. So here's the finished sock. The afterthought heel was done via the instructions on Susan B. Anthony's um, sock pattern uh, with her great tips for how to get nice decreases and whatnot and nice Kitchener. So I am on the second one. I put the needle in to start the heel and I am this far. Here's the heel. Here's the foot. Figure I might be ready to start the toe, so I wanted to put the heel in so I could try it on. This is uh, probably be done next podcast, and then I'll be ready to start a pair of stripey socks for our stripey summer stripe along that I'm doing with other podcasts, um, and I'll talk about that later in the podcast. Uh, and that is. Um, the usual US one needle. It's really um, just my own sock recipe for my foot. <laughs> so the other thing I've worked on, and not too much to be honest, is the column, column sweater by Isabel Kramer that I started for the Fruity You and Me Cow. Um, this is knit from the bottom down, I mean the top down. So here's the top. This is the back, and it's knit with Knit Picks Lindy. It's a cotton linen blend. And uh, I, simple potato chip pattern, nice yarn. I like it. I usually don't like knitting with cotton, but this has a really nice feel to it. I am knitting these, I think this is US 4. Yeah, and I believe that's what the pattern called for. So that, not much progress, but uh, I have been working on some things that I'm going to show you now. They were finished objects, so they are finished objects now. So I didn't get much time on the uh, column 
So finished object number one and one that will count, well, my stuff won't count, but one for the uh, goals contest of finishing whips is, ta-da, Yarn Fairy in My Garden by Donna Dracunis. I call it my apple blossom shawl. It's a square shawl. It was blocked at my mom's when I was up there for Mother's Day, so I did finish it in time. Let me stand back a little more. I took some great pictures by the river. <clears throat> and you may have seen some pictures I took at my mom's. Uh, so this was a great pattern. However, the beading on the edge was a pain in the you know what and insignificant so if I had to do it over I would have omitted the little beads on the edge here's one and you can't even see it see the the beads that came with the kit way too small for this yarn I went nuts trying to get these beads onto the yarn I can't tell you how much dental floss I broke trying to get these beads on the yarn. No, I was going to say a bad word. I'm not going to say a bad word. Forget it. <laughs> I would never do that again. Or I would just use a bigger bead, but for the, it's just around the trim and why bother? Right? So that is a big deal. Um, I will, I have more whips I can start working on, and I mentioned the Alice Starmore wrap that I have, so I'll probably, maybe I'll pull that out of the closet next. The other FO, finished these a while ago, the Koala socks, knit in um, socks that rock, lightweight, in the Sea Scum, Sea Scum Run Colorway, uh, one of the most terrible sock patterns ever written, but if you care enough to make adjustments they're very pretty socks so good idea poor writing skills um i really love these socks they fit pretty good they're a little loose but there's no way i would have knit these on a zero so very happy with them i maybe could have taken a few more stitches out of the pattern but all in all i'm glad i knit them I like the way they came out. I was able to fix, you know, adjust the pattern and uh, all is well. But don't, don't uh, knit the, these socks from her book, uh, the Socktopus book, unless you are okay with making adjustments to pattern. Third FO. This is the Ripley sweater tank, rather, for my daughter Rachel. Here's the front. I knit this in um, Quince and Company, um, um, what do they call it? Quince and Company Kestrel in the Pebbles colorway. And I washed it in the wash and it came out pretty good. Here's the detail. These are actually leaves. This is definitely a style my daughter will love. She'll be here Wednesday. So I will take pictures of her wearing it on Wednesday, but Definitely a Rachel style. She's very, she likes tank tops. She likes grays and blacks and things like that. So she will love this. Great pattern. I loved it. What a cute little tank. You know, you could knit it in different colors to get different looks. And um, just a great pattern. Uh, a beautiful little sweater. So, I mean, there's no stash enhancement. That's about it. I'm only 10 minutes in, but I have a lot to talk about. So if you want to hang around, I'm going to talk about the third whip, which I didn't show you yet, but I'm going to talk about some stupid things I did. So maybe you can learn from it or laugh at me, whatever you want to do. Um, there is a clip at the end that I recorded last night in Mitt I was very frustrated last night. I wasn't like uh, pissy or anything, but I was just like, what the heck? What? I don't, I was baffled. I was baffled. So uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but uh, Starmore sweater. Here is 
it's off the needles because this is going to be ripped out and I have to re I have to start over. But um, here's what the trim will look like. I already ripped out uh, what I had done so far of the actual fair aisle pattern. This is just the trim at the bottom. Beautiful colors, yada, yada, yada. Uh, there's a good bit of information about this and gauge and just stuff like that. And you, um, when you're knitting something like this that costs like 200 plus for the kit, and it's going to take hours and hours of work best to do it right and do it and make it so that it looks the way you want it to look so ripping it out and starting over is not a problem it's just the way it is and next time i'll be more careful okay so i'm going to end this with the show and tell and i will talk more about this after announcements and chatter so um announcements we are in the middle of uh, the second stage of the um, 2017 goals contest or whatever for the Hudson Valley Knits podcast. I do it uh, different this year than in the past where each quarter we focus on a different type of goal that I had. So in, instead of other people accomplishing their goals, we're going to kind of follow loosely my goals. And the goal I'm focusing on this quarter is finishing up whips. So you saw my um, shawl which had been started years ago and sat in the closet for at least two years that is done and you can pick up any project that you have that's a whip and you started before 2017 and finish it up and post a picture in that thread in my uh, Ravelry group and get a chance to win the Stephen West uh, book West Knits, West Knits Best Knits uh, the shawl volume. Excellent book, amazing prize, and not a lot of posts, so uh, get over there and post your whips because you have a good chance of winning. And then um, this the, this quarter will go to the end of June, so you have about another month left to finish up some whips, so have at it. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the summer stripe along that I'm doing with um, three other podcasters. The details, I will, um, you know what, I wasn't thinking. I emailed myself the details, totally not thinking that. The email would be on my phone, which I use to record my podcast, so I can't look at the email. But anyway, it's Simply Stashless Podcast. It's um, um, Helen... See, I can't remember how long it's been. I read it in my show notes last week, maybe. Um, Giddy Knits, which is Helen. Anders Mill Knits, which is Emily. Simply Stashless, which is Karen. Um, I had mentioned Helen from, from um, Sprite966. She had to back out, which is fine. Um, uh, and then there's, I think it's Pink Cat Knits. Pink Sock Knits forget the fourth one I'm really apologize but like I said the email is on my phone but I can go over some of the rules we're gonna have different categories but any category is eligible for a prize and we're gonna have lots of prizes so each one of us is personally donating a prize and then we have lots of very cool sponsors um, so there is a uh, Ravelry group for the summer stripe along which you have to be a member to win of that group you don't have to be a member of my group, but I appreciate if you join my group. It's always appreciated and always welcome. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to start a pair of stripy socks as soon as I finish these. And I'm going to start this... Um, well, I'm knitting the Stephen West Exploration Station. I haven't worked on it in a couple of weeks because I've been trying to finish up stuff. But that is... I consider that stripy, so that would count. Um, you can't use whips. You have to start it after June 1st, but I, I'm not getting prizes, so I'm just going to keep that as one of my stripey uh, projects. And I also have on the Spice Market by Melanie Berg, which I, I have a kit for that that I want to knit up as part of this stripe along. So I got a lot of cool stuff to work on, and I'm looking forward to hopefully getting a lot of people together, a lot of chatter. 
I've put together a bundle of stripy shawl suggestions that you can check out in that Ravelry group. And I know some other people have done some bundles, so check out the bundles where you can get some ideas. And um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So what have I been doing? I, I was should have podcast last week and I didn't because I was up at my parents' house for Mother's Day and my aunt was visiting and um, her daughter Stephanie came up to visit whom I haven't seen in years and so there was no time to podcast and um, that's fine and then when I came home and Mark told me that Birdie had died. I was just kind of sad. And so just life has been kind of rough. I, I heard Sunday night, I got up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom and I slid on the stairs and I twisted my ankle and I've had a bad ankle for two weeks. I had to work from home for a whole week and just ice my ankle. So I haven't been able to get out and go hiking. I'll probably miss the mountain laurel this year because I can't really hike. I can walk on it, but it gets swollen by the end of the day. So that's been going on. Things are picking up at work and getting a little busy and stressful. And I just got a lot of stuff going on. So that's why I missed last week. Um, but uh, I'll be back on track now. Uh, you may know um, that it was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago was uh, Mother's Day here in the U.S. So, um, what else have I been doing? I, I knew there was something else I wanted to tell you, but anyway, I um, no, I, I did. I twist my ankle the week before Mother's Day. That's right. It wasn't Mother's Day. It was the week before. But anyway, my daughter Rachel is coming home. She's, for you that don't know, my daughter lives in Orlando, Florida. She went to school there and uh, stayed there. But she uh, is coming home for our Memorial Day weekend here in the States. We have Memorial Day is the last, usually the last weekend in the month of May. Um, and she'll be home for a long weekend. So I'm taking a couple of days off. And then Wednesday, which is the 31st, she and my husband are flying to Orlando. They're going to rent a U-Haul. She has two motorcycles and a car that she'll be towing and all her stuff. And they are going to drive to Salt Lake City, Utah, where she will begin working at a BMW motorcycle dealership as a mechanic. It's her first official mechanic job since graduating from MMI Motorcycle Mechanic Institute and we're really proud of Rachel and we're really excited for her new start so that's kind of exciting news um, for that's going on in my family right now and that's kind of what I'm focusing on to keep me happy <laughs> Uh, what else is going on? I think that's about it. I, I really hope you guys try joining the Summer Stripe Along, even if it's just with one project for now. You can always cast on a pair of stripey socks, and there's plenty of really beautiful stripey shawls out there to knit. So come and join. Find the Ravelry group. I, I, I'll put a link up again uh, to that. And um, next podcast, we'll have plenty of stripey stuff to show. So I am going to head home now and maybe even get this podcast up tonight. I want to thank you all for joining me. Stay tuned because after this, I'm going to talk about the Alice Starmore sweater and I'm going to share some information with you about Gage. And I think, I think you'll find it useful and maybe see why, well, I, guess, I don't think anybody would dispute if you're knitting a, a huge Fair Isle jacket, Gage is important. But uh, stay tuned for that. And then, uh, like I said at the end, a little tribute to my beautiful bird, Birdie. Who actually, Birdie's real name is Honey. That's what my daughter named him when she got him when she was just like four years old. Um, but it just kind of changed to Birdie. Everybody called him Birdie. Um, so it stuck. And uh, I'll, I'll put some pictures at the end there. It's very lonely and quiet in the house lately without birdie but 
life goes on and like I said we're grateful sorry for the train in the background um, we're grateful to have had Bertie as long as we did so I hope you guys have a wonderful week I will see you in a couple of weeks and hopefully I'll have some nice pictures of Rachel wearing her tank her Riley tank top to show you at the next podcast thanks bye hi hi everyone this is going to be just kind of like a, a add-on to the podcast you can so if you're not interested you don't have to watch it but it, it's about gauge and knitting sweaters so I am as you know knitting an Alice Starmore cardigan it's like a jacket cardigan so it's meant to be uh, loose fitting called abalone let me show you here's a picture so you can see it's a little boxy a little loose it's definitely a jacket it's supposed to be long I've talked about this in the past few podcasts um, so let me tell you what happened today I was knitting and I um, just I was knitting the fair isle pattern and I noticed that the stitch uh, the the color work pattern was not matching up so what I did is I backtracked to see where I might have um, messed up that uh, got my pattern off and what I ended up finding was I had dropped a stitch three a uh, couple of rounds below and it messed up two rounds worth of color work so I decided to instead of trying to fix and adjust like if it were the previous round what I would have done is I just would have picked it and re-knit it without ripping it which I you know I'm not gonna go into but because it was two, uh, a couple of rounds below I decided to rip it out so I took it off the needle which is no big deal because it's sticky shuttle chill and wool and when I did I realized that my cardigan was a lot larger than it should have been so here is what I have been working on thus far and you can tell just by looking at it it's way too big I took a tape measure and just kind of did like this at a table Oops. just kind of took the tape measure and kind of went like this around much uh, cleaner than I you know I was holding it flat and just to kind of see how big around it was and I got a few different I did it a few times and I got a few different measurements one time I got 166 166 centimeters one time I got 170 centimeters one time I got like 174 centimeters so let's just say, because I, I, I know it's not a perfect measure, way to measure, it's roughly 170 centimeters all the way around. I got gauge and cast on for an extra large, which should be 140 centimeters around with gauge. So I am off by 30 centimeters, which is roughly... 12 inches a foot and if, you know what if I put this over my head you can see so my bust measurement is 120 centimeters and the extra large should measure up to be 140 centimeters or roughly 8 inches of positive ease which still is a bit much for me but you can see I have this much ease which is much more than 10 inches or 8 inches or whatever it was and um, I couldn't understand why I still don't understand why to be honest with you but I'm going to show you um, or let me, I, I can explain to you that um, I thought about doing just the large but I was afraid because my stitch my uh, gauge does get tighter in the end I was afraid that I wouldn't um, it would be too tight and I always try to go too too loose and too tight especially with a cardigan because I would it, uh, my big chest would make things pucker so 
what I'm going to show you is my gauge swatch and I'm going to prove to you I got gauge and then I'm going to show you what's really baffling me as I kind of laid this flat and did some sample gauges different areas of this what I knit up already and this is not wet blocked it's the only difference and it is a garter stitch pattern for the trim whereas this is the stockinette part but when I measure these in 10 centimeter increments I'm getting like 26 stitches per inch uh, per four cent uh, 10 centimeters which it still should not give me 170 centimeters all the way around so I don't know what the hell is going on and I'm kind of uncertain as to what to, to, to go by when I just to decide how many stitches I should cast on and what size I should knit because if I well let me go into that sitting down so you can look at it so I'll go into that next so let's start with the gauge swatch the tension asked for um, for this pattern is 28 stitches for 10 centimeters now this swatch was knit in the round um, holding the yarn behind and I trimmed it I did it exactly the way she said to do it basically and I wet blocked it and I let it sit a couple of days and I played with it I did all the things you're supposed to do and I have the t-pins in there for the 10 centimeters I don't know if you could see them but I'm gonna count them with you now and this is with a US 3 we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 28 stitches in 10 centimeters. Spot on. I had mentioned a couple of podcasts ago that my row gauge was a little off and I I shortened the length of the bottom of the hem trim, hemline trim to compensate for that. So this should be a perfect 140 centimeters around because the extra large I cast on for is 140 centimeters or 55 inches and I am 47, 48 inches around or roughly 121 centimeters. The large would have been 50 inches and I wanted and I was afraid it would just not be enough ease. Um, and this is if you get gauge. When I measured all around, that um, uh, what I had knit so far, I got 170 centimeters, and that's kind of the average of what I got the the number uh, the few times I um, measured around. And and like I said before, that was a very rough way to measure. I was just trying to get an idea. If I take that 170 centimeters and the number of stitches I cast on for the extra large, that indicates roughly 23 stitches per 10 centimeters. That's very different than 28 stitches that I got knitting this stockinette swatch. So let's, let's just do that really quick. I'm going to show you and this is why, I, this is what I can't wrap my head around it, and it's got me so baffled, is I, um, let me get all this stuff out of the way, and you just bear with me while I come out my sheet all the way, okay. All right, so here we have, let's start with the steep. Here's the steek, you can see all the ends. And I'm going to start there. And I'm just going across. I'm not stretching the fabric, I'm just laying it down. Um, right. That's 
120, 40, here it's 150. That. Just going to put a pin here and mark that. Make sure. In case it shifts. Almost at the end. Another 20. That's, you know, actually another 21. So that's 170 centimeters around. With 392 stitch, uh, 392 stitches, that says I should. This is averaging out to 23 stitches per 10 centimeters gauge. The only thing I can attribute that to is this garter stitch um, hemline. It's um, it's Fair Isle, but it's garter stitch Fair Isle. So that might, you know, that's going to change, you know, because the, the swatch is obviously a stockinette. All right. So what I do, because I can't believe it's that far off, is I take my metal ruler and I just pick a couple of spots. I, I just, I don't stretch out the fabric. And again, this is not wet blocked like my gauge swatch was. But then I count this. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. right here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, and maybe, maybe a half. So now I'm like, I've got 23 if I go by the measurement around, but should I? Because that's a rough way to measure. But when I do gauge on different spots, I'm getting 26, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. If, let me do the math on that, if I have 26 stitches per 10 centimeters and I have 392 stitches, divided by hmm. I'll get 150 centimeters around but I'm getting 170 centimeters around that's eight inches more <laughs> so what is wrong with this picture should I go by the 23 stitches per inch or should I go by the 26 stitches per inch? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. We're talking eight inches. Should I just stick with this US 3 and knit the size smaller? I don't know. I don't know what to do. Dilemmas. But either way, this is getting ripped out. And uh, I guess I'll do it for you here on the camera. Okay, so this is, um, after you saw the clip I did last night, this is a little addendum. I didn't want to tell you before when I was just kind of showing you the whip, I wanted to show you, I wanted to talk about this after the fact. So I, I didn't rip out my entire sweater last night. I just ripped out the, the four or five rows of Fair Isle pattern I had done and not the, the trim. Because I just wanted to like approach it with a fresh mind the next day and um, measure it again and maybe even, you know, pin it out and measure it so I, I got an accurate gauge. 
Um, and I was actually even debating whether or not to do another gauge swatch, to be honest with you. Um, so I did. I, I, I put it away and I got up this morning and I was thinking about, I, I mentioned in the, the clip I, made, I recorded last night that it just baffled me how I had the perfect gauge on my gauge swatch. I had 28 stitches for 10 centimeters. Perfect. And then um, on the actual uh, piece that I knit so far, I measured around and, and I measured fairly carefully, but it's not 100% accurate because it's not how you really truly measure a gauge. But just to get a good idea, and I got 170 centimeters around when it should have been 140. Okay, so think about that. Uh, it's 140? Yeah, 140. Or 55 inches is what it should have been around. And it was a lot more than that. It was like, um, I think it was like 16 inches more than that. I forget the numbers, but you just listen to it. So that would equate to 23 to 24 stitches per 10 centimeters if you do the math. And then when I took the ruler and did little test gauge uh, of 10 centimeters various places around the band, I got 27, 26 a couple of times, which is a little looser than my gauge swatch, but it's a garter stitch band. So I can see it being a little looser and I was like, okay, this is not 23, 24 though, uh, stitches per 10 centimeters. So what's going on here? So I'm drinking my coffee this morning, which must have been why I, I finally figured it out. And I said, well, you know what? Let me just count how many stitches I cast on again. Maybe I screwed up and cast on too many stitches. So I counted around and sure as I cast on 50 extra stitches. I had 444 stitches uh, uh, cast on and it should have been 397 or some, something like that. That's why it was so flipping huge. Simple, simple answer. So if your gauge swatch is good and your piece is not, check the number of stitches you cast on. Perhaps that could be your problem. So that's why I have to start this damn thing over from scratch. And I actually am glad because now after thinking about it, even if I get gauge, it was a little looser, the gauge on the band. So I might tend to make it a little bigger. And that and the extra large size being 55 inches around and my bust measurement, I checked again this morning. I had Mark do it so that I was standing straight. He got 48 inches um, under the armpits and then down across the bust. That was 48 inches. So that means I would have seven extra inches of ease and I don't want it quite that loose. So I'm gonna go down to the large, which will be 50 inches around. So that'll give me two inches of ease. Again, I would have liked maybe an inch or two, maybe four or five, four. Four would have been perfect, but there's no sizing for that. However, I, as I pointed out, my gauge was a little looser when I started knitting up the sweater, which could give me a couple of extra inches. So I figured out if I, um, wow, there's a lot of fire trucks going. If I knit at this 26 slash 27 um, stitches per 10 centimeters, then I'll get 53 Inch, 52 to 53 inches, which would be perfect. So I'm going to go with that and I'm going to cast on again. So there's my gauge story for you. All right, so I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. <laughs>